evening, Cherry Grove Baptist Church. So good to see you tonight. What a beautiful evening, all about 71 degrees, just right to worship the Lord. Amen? So glad to have you tonight. We welcome you. We want you to enjoy the worship tonight, the message tonight. Let's just give God the glory and enjoy Him as we worship. Good evening, everybody. I hope you all have enjoyed not having rain today, <laughs> or for the most part. I'm just kidding. God knows what we need before we need it. Amen? One honk. Anybody? No, thank you. That was supposed to be a little bit of a joke. It's okay to laugh, y'all. Y'all, can, we can laugh in your cars. No, tonight we are going to start off with uh, one of my favorite songs, Everlasting God, because in our, unchain or our uncertain times, we have a very, very certain God. And even if you're in your car, sing along. Ready? Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. will be 
when we get to be with him in glory. Hallelujah. about this gospel? Why gather out here and worship? Why make such big do about all this? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus Christ is alive and well. He is real. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's the redeemer of the world. And he saves people. He endows people with his spirit. And he changes people to be like himself. And one day, bless God, he's going to take us out of this earth to be with him forevermore in a place called heaven. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And I don't know about you, but over 35 years ago, this, this man trusted Christ as his Lord and Savior. And he saved me. He forgave me of my sins, not because of anything I've done, but because of what he's done on Calvary's cross. And by faith, I trusted him to forgive me and save me and be with me, and he's been faithful all the way. Hallelujah to God. It's a joy, it's a privilege to come out and serve him and worship him. It's not work, it's our life and our lifestyle. So we praise God for this privilege to worship and gather and, 
and give him glory and give him honor. We're just going to get happy in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Psalms 25, verses 1 through 10. I'm going to be very practical with you tonight, church, and those watching by Facebook. I want to be very practical and give you something. How to start your day. Everybody starts a day. Today, you started your day. And your day might have started good. It may be ending up bad. It may have started out sideways and a chaos and a crazy bunch of mess. I don't know, but I've had days like that. And I believe we've all had days like this. But as Christians, we've got to learn as God's children to start the day like God wants us to start the day. So I'm going to give you a model today right out of Scripture how to start your day. You can do this in the morning. It's very biblical, and you can start your day the way God wants you to start your day. You see, before people get saved, before I came to know the Lord, I didn't have the Spirit of God. I couldn't understand the God. I couldn't uh, communicate with God because I wasn't spiritually alive. But the Bible tells us when a person gets saved, their sins are forgiven, God's Spirit comes to live in them, and then they're able to communicate and pray and get in touch with God. Now, when we get in touch with God, we're able to understand what He has for us, like these scriptures that we'll be looking at tonight. And God wants us to be able to live this spiritual life, this life. We are actually amphibious beings, like for example, a turtle. A turtle is able to be in the water, and a turtle is able to be in la on land. Well, as Christians, we're able to be in this physical world, and at the same time, we're able to be in the spiritual world. Hallelujah, bless Jesus. We're able to conduct our lives in a spiritual realm, in a spiritual atmosphere, doing spiritual things, thinking spiritual things. Because we're children of God and we have the Spirit of God. So that's what I want to look at tonight. How to start your day. So take your Bibles. Hope you got an outline tonight. If you didn't get an outline, raise your hand. I'll throw one at you or lose one. We'll get one to you. We'd love for you to have it. Just hold your hand out the window. Anybody is welcome to it. How to start your day. Verse tw uh, chapter 25 of Psalm, verses 1 through 10. Take your Bibles and let's look at it. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait upon thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness. For they have been, been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. I'm so glad that all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. God is such a faithful God, a loyal God, a dependable God. He gives us what we need. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. How to start your day. Let me give you a testimony of one Charles Swindoll and how he starts his day. First of all, before he ever gets out of bed, 
he sits up on the side of his bed and he says this. This is your day, Lord. I want to be at your disposal. I have no idea what these next 24 hours will contain. But before I begin, before I sip my first cup of coffee, even before I get dressed, I want you to know that from this moment on, throughout this day, I'm yours, Lord. Help me to be a branch that abides in the vine, to lean on you, to draw strength from you, to have you fulfill my mind and my thoughts, take control of my senses so that I am literally filled with your presence and your power and your dynamic. I want to be your tool, your vessel today. I can't make it happen. Without you, I can accomplish nothing. And so I am saying, Lord, fill me with your spirit today. Wow. I pray that you say something like that as you begin your day. We as Christians, listen to me, we as Christians, God's children in God's family with God's spirit shouldn't carry on our lifestyle like this world. We shouldn't get up and watch just endless news and endless sports or whatever it may be and then go on to work and forget God in the morning. We should be a people that wake up and have God on our hearts and minds. Do I have an amen out there? Yeah. God's Spirit stirs us up to our Father. God's Spirit stirs us up to the Lord Jesus Christ and gives us a passion. So when we wake up, we've got to begin to train ourselves to be heavenward. Train ourselves to think toward God, to think about God. So we need to be putting some disciplines into our lives when we wake up what we're going to do. Because listen to me, we're in a spiritual warfare. As soon as you wake up, Satan is attacking. As soon as you wake up, he's scheming. He's figuring out how to get to you through your mate, through your children, through your job, through your health. He's already scheming how he can discourage you, bring you down in your faith. He'll use your children, he'll use your grandchildren, he'll use your job, he'll use anything to get you to not trust God, not depend on God, and not praise God, and not focus on God those early moments as you rise up from the bed. Now, if you've got a pencil, I'll go ahead and give you the outline, and then we'll work through it. How to start your day. Number one, give up. Number two, confess up. Number three, speed up. Number four, look up. Number five, rise up. And number six, speak up. You say, well, I didn't get such such blank. That's all right. We'll walk through it as we go through the sermon. Number one, give up. Look in your Bible, verse one. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. The first thing we need to do as we start our day is just confess to God, own up to God. God, I'm giving up control. Take your Bibles and turn to Galatians, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16 and 17. If you got the outline, it's printed in the outline for you. Now I want you to notice, as soon as you wake up, there's a battle. The Spirit is in you, but you still got the flesh. And also, we can expand that and say this, the devil is out there, the devil is around, him and his demons plotting, scheming, and then you got the world system run by the devil, so you got a lot of enemies going on, a lot of opposition going on, so it's critical, it's crucial that you and I start setting our mind in those first waking hours on God toward God, with God, that we can walk with him throughout the whole day. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. There's the standard right there. Walk in the Spirit. As a Christian, that's the normal way that we live. 
in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Watch this. So when you get up, let me ask you, when you got up this morning, did you get up and start moving in the spirit? Or did you get up and start moving in the flesh? Well, I tell you what, if you got up and started griping about the food and griping about the weather and griping about going to work, you got up in the flesh. Amen? Because the Bible says those that are filled by the Spirit are thankful. So we want to get up and we want to start walking in the Spirit and turning our heart toward heaven. I want you to think about this. There's a warfare going on. And the psalmist here has got a pattern for us to start our day. And we start the day by giving up. I'm going to give up my leadership, my choice of leading my own life, my own way. And I want the Spirit to lead me. I want the Spirit to guide me. Think about it. Look at Psalm 24 and 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. And as God's children, we are His. Turn to 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 and 20. 6 and 19 and 20. Uh, we've got to settle some things on the front end. And this point number one, some of you are not going to get... You're not even going to get past it. You're not even going to accept it. you gotta, you got to deal with this ownership, creator and ownership and lordship and leadership. Some Christians, they know the Lord. They're born again, but they're still doing a tug of war. Well, I want to lead my life. No, Lord, you can lead my life now. No, Lord, I want to lead my life. No, I want you to lead my life. And then we get in trouble on something. A sickness comes up. A crisis, a pandemic comes up. Oh, I want God. I want God. Folks, the normal Christian life is to want God all the time. That's worth a horn right there. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 6 in verse 19, look what Paul says. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Watch this. I'm a temple. His spirit is in me. I'm not my own anymore. So when I wake up, it's not about me leading. I want to give it up to him. That's why I lift my soul up to him. I want him to lead. Verse 20, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Apostrophe S. Yes. He possesses us. We are his. He owns us. Turn to Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Here. Paul says the same thing as the psalmist is saying in Psalm 25 and 1. I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We're to, we're to give up. We're to give up. We're to give ownership up to God. We're to give leadership up to God. We're to give lordship up to God. He's the one to lead us and guide us. We do that the very beginning of the day before we do anything else. He's the number one relationship in our lives. Now watch this. If he's the number one relationship in your life, shouldn't he be the number one person, the first person that you talk to every day? That's right. That's exactly right. Now, Christian, you won't get the victory and you won't start your day right until you start doing this. You say, well, how can you say that with uh, uh, definiteness? Because that's what the Bible says. We're not our own anymore. More. We've been bought with a price. I'm a temple. His spirit's in me. I'm his. So he knows how to... Get a day started and start it right to the glory of his name. Praise his name. In the mornings, when I wake up, go to my office in my house, 
I have a scripture reference, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. And it basically says that God's not given us a spirit of timidity or fear, but of love, of power, and a sound mind or discipline. And every day I yield myself up to the Holy Spirit. God is in me, God's Spirit's in me, and I yield leadership to Him. And He's a spirit of love, hallelujah. He's a spirit of power, hallelujah. And he is a spirit of discipline. I'm not disciplined, but him in me, I can be disciplined. Amen? Same thing for all Christians. The work of God Almighty. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How to start your day. Give up. You've got to give over control. It's his leading now, not our leading. I, I can't resist this. Turn in your Bibles to uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. I was going to save this for another time, but I've got to give it right here. The Bible says, And be not drunk with wine, which in is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit, Paul says. In other words, when you wake up, there's that flesh battle going on with the Spirit. The devil's around. The world's around. And we have this command from God. I want to say four things about this verb here, be filled with the Spirit. Number one, it is in the imperative mode. It is a command. Now, listen, Christian. This is not, oh, well, I appreciate you sharing that, preacher. Oh, no. God is commanding you. Be led. Be filled. Be walking in the Spirit. What a joy. Hallelujah. I can be like Jesus. I can rise above this drama. I can rise above the panic. I can rise above the anxiety. I can rise above the worry. I can rise above all this nonsense that's going on under the sun. Under the sun. Vanity, vanity, vanity. All is vanity under the sun. But above the sun, my friend, there is joy and peace and life and life more abundantly. Be filled with the Spirit. First of all, it is a command. Second of all, to be filled with the Spirit is in the plural form. The verb's in the plural form. Th that means it's applied to every Christian. Not just the preacher. Not just the evangelist. Not just the deacon or Sunday school teacher. Lord knows we need it. It applies to everybody. Paul is commanding us to be filled with the Spirit. Paul is commanding us all to be filled with the Spirit. Number three, it's a passive voice. He's not saying fill yourself up with the Spirit. He's saying let the Holy Spirit fill you. Let's get ourselves in such a shape that God, let's set things up and cooperate with God to such a degree that he's able to fill us. You say, what do you mean, Brother Tommy? Let's get the disobedience out of our life. Let's get the, the rebellion out of our life. Let's get the world out of our life. And then there'll be room for God to fill us with his spirit. Amen? Think about it. You can't walk in darkness and think that the spirit is going to walk with you. He's walking in the light. And we are to be walking in the light. Number four, that verb there, to be filled with the Spirit, is in the present tense. We are to be continually filled with the Spirit. Wake up, get going, take off to work, somebody cut you off, you don't give them a bird, you don't give them a sign, you don't cuss them out. You just keep on traveling in the spirit of Jesus. Amen? That's right. You get to work and somebody just goes all over you. Need to be filled with the spirit again. Amen? You get to work 
and complaint, accusation, whatever it may be, it happens. Folks, listen, this being filled with the Spirit is not perfectly being filled with the Spirit. That's impossible here. But continually, I need him, I need him, I need him, I need him, I need him. We need to return to a passion for God's Holy Spirit in our life. To be filled and to be refilled and to be filled again and again and again and living that abundant life. How to start your day. Give up. Number two, confess up. Here in the 25th Psalm, the psalmist is confessing some things. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait upon thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Here in the first part of verse 2, the psalmist says, I trust in thee. In the mornings, we got to affirm our trust in the Lord. Amen? You get up in the morning, Lord, I'm trusting in you today. I know that you're a loving and merciful God. I'm, I'm banking on you today. I'm believing in you. I'm believing in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm believing in your promises. I'm your child. I'm going out into this day. I'm your ambassador. I'm your disciple. I trust you. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we will remember. We will trust in the name of the Lord our God. That's our Motto, that's our belief, that's our statement of confession. Psalm 20 and 7, some trust in uh, chariots and horses, but we will remember the Lord our God. Confess, confess your faith in God. Look at 1 John chapter 4 and verse 16. Printed there on your note. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Watch this. God is love. If God is love, better say, since God is love, his will is best. Amen. Since God is love, perfect love, not like your love, not like my love. Sometimes it's up and it's right, and sometimes it's down and it's conditional and it's sideways and a mess. God's love is pure, unconditional, does not depend on other people's behavior. God's love is untainted, pure, unconditional, always the same. So, since his love is like that, his will is always best. Hallelujah, yes. And also in John, the Bible says that God is light. Look at 1 John 1, 5. This then is the message which we have, uh, have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. How to start your day? Give up. Give up leadership to God. Humble yourself. Let Him lead your life. Confess up. Confess your trust in God. You're actually confessing His trustworthiness. He is love. His will is best. He is light. In him there is no darkness. He is morally perfect. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. He is thee. The Lord Jesus Christ was the perfect 
human being. Hallelujah. Glory to God Almighty. When he loved, it was with perfect love. When he did good, it was perfect goodness. When he was long-suffering and patient, it was perfect long-suffering and perfect patience. So we need to give up. We need to confess up his glorious character. We're trusting in him. Number three, we need to speed up. Notice in verse 4 and 5. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation on thee. Do I wait all the day. Now in this section here, these two verses, it speaks of four things at least that David is speeding up and going after in his day. And you might have to repeat this how to start your day within your day because it may go sideways in your day multiple times, amen? And we need to get back in the spirit of God, in the way of God. Four things he says here. He's looking for God's ways. It ain't time to sit around. It's time to pursue God. Seek God. Go after God. Seek his ways as revealed in scripture. Study him. Study him. He's talking about uh, teach me thy ways. Well, we have our part of studying the word of God, reading the word of God. Then God will teach us his ways. And number three, he says follow. See that in your Bible? Follow. Lead me in thy truth. You can't lead someone unless they're following. Number four, wait. You say, how are you going to speed up and wait? I know it sounds funny, but that's exactly what we do. There's times in the day we just wait in the presence of the Lord. We're waiting on Him to, to arrange something. We're waiting on Him to answer a prayer. We're waiting on His strength. We're waiting on His words instead of just shooting off our mouth with anything that comes in our mind. Amen? Waiting on the Lord. We need to give up, confess up, and speed up. Are you doing those four things? As you speed into your day? Oh, we're more concerned about other things. Oh, I gotta see the stock market this morning. Oh, I gotta see the sports page this morning. Oh, I gotta get to Duncan this morning. Oh, I gotta do this this morning. Well, what about what God wants? We're here for Him. We've been redeemed for His glory. Amen? There's nothing wrong with those other things, but they have their place in a priority list. They have their place. Speed up. Number four, look up. In verses eight through uh, six through eight, there's three things here that David is looking up to. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been of old. Remember not the sin of my youth, nor my transgressions according to the mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. He talks about mercy. You can't get mercy unless you're seeking mercy. Have you asked God for mercy today? I, I tell you. God, God, help me be merciful to me that I won't do something stupid today, that I won't say something stupid today, that I won't get in the flesh. You know how dangerous it is to walk in the flesh? When we walk in the flesh, we're walking according to our strength, according to our wisdom, according to uh, our understanding. And my friend, that got us in the fall. That got us banished from the garden, trying to do it our way. Now it's to do it God's way, to walk in the Spirit. We're to look up for mercy. There's a throne of grace. Maybe tonight, this is what you needed to hear. You just need to cry out for mercy. You need to go down and get humble and say, God, I've done went as far as I can with this relationship or in these finances or with this job. And unless you change somebody's heart, unless you move things around, unless you raise something up, I can't do it. 
Help me, God. The greatest place anybody can be is when they cry out to God. Help me, God. That's how we got saved. Amen. Help me, God. Second thing is loving kindness. Loving kindness. The psalmist says on another place about waking up to the loving kindness. Nobody loves you. Nobody will ever love you and love me like God loves us. So we look up to God's love. We affirm God's love. There's nothing that you can do to cause God to love you more. There's nothing that you can do to cause God to love you less. When you're his child, you're the best. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. He loves you like he loves his son. Third word there is goodness. Hallelujah for the goodness of God. God is good and all he does is good. Do I understand it? Can I put it all together? No, but I trust him. I trust him. Look up. Now raise up. Look at verse 9. How do I start a day? How do I do it right every day? Well, I give up. Give up control to God. I give myself over to God. I confess my trust in God. I speed up into pursuing God. I look up for the, the character and mercy of God upon my life. And I rise up. How do I rise up? Verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his ways. Now watch this. My Bible says to me, just like your Bible is saying to you, it is this characteristic of meekness, humbleness, that God is able to work with. God can't work with a mule-headed person. Amen? A mule-headed Christian, a stubborn Christian. But with a meek, he can work with us. With a teachable Christian, he can work with us. Because we're willing to learn. We're willing to listen. Look at James chapter 4 in verse 6 and 7. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith. God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Rise up. You rise up by going down. It's a paradox. God exalts us when we humble ourselves. The key to the Christian life is humility, 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 humility. Last one, speak up. Verse 10, this section ends by declaration, by proclamation. The psalmist is excited and says, All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. God, in other words, God is faithful. God is faithful. God is loyal. His ways are true. His ways are tried. His ways are proven. He's going to be loyal. He's a perfect God. He has strength and wisdom and knowledge to back it up. Listen to this. God lovingly reigns with all wisdom, with all knowledge, with all power, at all times, for all people, in all places. Hallelujah to God tonight. Hallelujah to God tonight. That is how you wake up in the mornings. You wake up God-saturated, God-focused, God-seeking, and you continue that throughout the whole day. God bless you. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you that you instruct us and guide us and lead us and care for us in this Christian life. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, I believe Mr. Les is going to get going.